The purpose of this lesson is to introduce Java arrays. To do this, let's get started by putting JShell up. An array is a mutable sequence type. So it's indexed, much like Python's list. To make an array of integers, say, you can make an array of primitive or of object type. But let's go ahead and make an array called boxes and put a semicolon at the end. And right now, boxes is pointing at null because we have not initialized it. Arrays have a special constructor, and the way you call that constructor is you say boxes is equal to new int square bracket, and then the size you want to give the array. Say we'll give it 10, semicolon. And here's an interesting thing that happens. When you create an array of integral type, that's any of byte, short, int, or long, that array is automatically populated with zeros. Java has something called the ovipositor, and it just lays an egg in every cell. So we have 10 consecutive cells of memory that will hold integers. For floating point arrays, you'll get a 0, 0.0. For a character array, you will get the null character, which has ASCII value 0. And for Boolean, you'll get falses. So an array is automatically initialized. Now, when you have an array of object type, it's a little different. Let's look at that. I'm going to say uh, string square bracket names is equal to new string, oh, say of 10. You'll see that everything will be null. So if you make a new array, all you have is pointers that potentially can point somewhere, but they're initialized to null. So if you try to do something like this, uh, to access the element of an array, you can go names, square bracket, zero. Oh, let's see what happens when we do that. Okay, that'll happily print out null. But if you do something like this, No pointer exception. You're not allowed to call, call a method on something that points at null. So what you need to do now with an object type is you need to populate that array somehow. So here, I'll populate this array using a for loop. Okay, k is 0, k less than names.length. You will notice that for an array, length is a property. Length is a property. It is not a method. And the other thing to note is that the array size is fixed. Once you make an array, you cannot change its size. So now I'm going to go K plus plus, and I'll close up here. And now I'm going to say, names square bracket k. So name square bracket k is an L value. I can assign to it because it's legit memory. So I'll just go like this plus k k times k times k. Okay, so we'll just make this an array that holds uh, string representations of cubes. And there you go. Now, if I do Yuck! When you print out an array, the result looks like crap. It's no good. This is a worthless, there's no good two-string method because arrays, in a way, they're really second-class objects. They, they, they're, they're kind of primitive. Now, one thing that will come to the rescue is a static service class called arrays. Now, when you, when you want to use that class, you will have to do this import. When you're writing in a program, 
you'll have to import java.util.arrays. This, like math, is a static service class. Oops, I used a Python comment. This is a static service class. However, it's automatically imported by JShell. So what you can do is you do the following. You say, you say arrays, you're calling by the class name because everything in arrays is static. Arrays dot to string of your array names and see it prints out kind of like a Python list. And you can do the same thing. You know, you go back here. Oh, we have boxes. You can do the same thing to boxes. Let's do that. And it does a nice job of printing out an array, your array of boxes. So what happens is inside the toString method on each object gets called, or if it's a primitive, the object simply prints to the screen and you get it in a comma separated list inside of some uh, square brackets. So arrays are a mutable sequence type. You can get at things in an array by the index. So I can go like this is equal to oh, George Washington. OK, like so. And so names now has George Washington. I can do I can call because the entries in the arrays are strings. I can call string methods on them. I can go name square bracket zero dot car at zero and capital G should come right back at me. So these are JavaScript arrays or Java arrays. Java arrays are sort of primitive objects. They are of a fixed size. If you make an array of primitive type, a zero-ish or falsy entry will be placed in each little box. You can think of them as being little boxes that are next to each other in memory. Now, let's talk about the underlying ugly realities that are actually inside. The arrays are not storing the objects themselves. The arrays merely store a pointer that tells where to find that object in memory. So what you have is you have an array of boxes and when you look at a box, there is a reference to where that object actually is. Script arrays. I'll do a separate video on the static service class arrays, and we will talk about some of its methods. And it is, in fact, the preferred way to manipulate arrays because of its high efficiency.